Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Hey family, peace be unto you and have a peaceful Sabbath. We're gonna continue on with the four insights to help you process this coronavirus pandemic. How's everybody feeling? We're coming out of lockdown. Things are beginning to open up. Just recently, of course, we had a lot of civil unrest, rioting. So we'll continue on and again, this will be invaluable prayer. Now, we, you recall last week we talked about prayer being more than one addressing God through word or thought. It's more, it's communication and there's a dialogue. There's a sender, you send it through a medium, it could be your voice, it could be writing, and then God is the receiver and he gives feedback. So you got to wait for the feedback. And also, we said that it is key because communication is key to any relationship, to get that understanding. And I love the way Miles Monroe defined prayer. It's man's request to God to intervene in the affairs on earth. Now, we all need that right about now because the whole earth is rocking and reeling. So we'll continue on, but also for you marketing business folks, prayer can be considered a KPI, a key performance indicator of your relationship to God. So let's go on and look at some of the benefits of prayer. I've only listed seven, but there's a lot more. One, it eliminates anxiety and worry. Philippians says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. And number two, it gives you confidence in God. And this is the confidence that we can have. If we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And because he hears us, we shall have these petitions that we ask. And three, it helps us solve problems. Because God said, if any man lacks wisdom, and wisdom will tell you what to do, when to do, and how to do it in every situation. Let him ask God, and that's in uh, James 5. And then, number four, it is for protection. Psalms 18, 6 says, In my distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard my cry. And it goes on to say how he just comes down to the rescue. So God is the best and the original first responder. And then five, it delivers us from bondage. Paul and Silas were in prison and they were praying and singing and the prison began to shake. There was an earthquake and the doors actually opened. So whether you're bound physically or spiritually, you know, you might be bound by fear it could be bound by drugs or something else. And six, it heals sickness. It says in James 5, is any among you sick, pray. And seven, and one of the most important, it increases intimacy with God. And Psalms 145, eight says, that the Lord is dear to all who call on him, those that call on him in truth, he's close to you. And it, prayer is not an option, it's essential. We are living in a war zone. We can believe it now in the natural, but what we see in the natural is only the tip of the iceberg in the spiritual. I don't know if any of you have seen the Lord of the Ring, Ring trilogies, but you heard the phrase, there's a war against Middle Earth, the fight for Middle Earth has begun. Oh, it's, it's raging fiercely. We're in the heat of the battle. It has intensified. Now it is manifesting in the natural realm. This universal virus, the violence, the rioting, the protests, the, the, the unrest. You see it, but it's only, a tip, it's only a tip of the iceberg of what is going on in the spirit realm. Let me just read Ephesians 6.12 to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
let me break down some of those words. Wrestle is a very violent term, just like the phrase it means to hurl violently, like wrestling. And principalities means one of origin, the source, the beginning, the original. And I can't go into this deeply, but I wouldn't do justice if I didn't tell you the environment that we're, we're living in, the spiritual climate, and it's a lot more intense than the natural. But this war has been going on for thousands of years over mankind. There's God and the enemy, Satan. Now, it might be difficult for you. Some of you are just starting to believe or, or re-explore your faith in God. But in the Lord's Prayer, you remember last week, it said, deliver us from evil. Jesus acknowledges that it's evil. Evil exists. And so that word, um, high places, means celestial. We're talking about demonic spirits, people. Angels and demons are fighting right now over us to protect us. They're attacking us. And First Peter says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. He's real, he's looking to take, he's looking to come after us. But the good news, as we had this meditation before, God is searching for us. It's first Chronicles 16, sorry, second Chronicles 16 and nine, for the eyes of the Lord go back and forth throughout the earth, searching for one whose heart is perfect toward him, that he may show himself strong in their behalf. He's given us the power and authority even to fight against these powers and principalities. That's why it's so important to pray, to ask, to ask God to intervene in affairs of men. And so to close, I just remind you, pray. Doing this research, I have, I was convicted about my prayer life. It, it's it's, I need to pray more. I need to improve my prayer life. So if you don't pray, pray. If you, um, if you um, want to start, start. But it's essential, people. It's your help. It's, prayer is a spiritual weapon. And again, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and wickedness in high places. So, family, with that, remember that those who know their God will do great exploits. Have a peaceful Sabbath, and if this video has added value, please like and share. Shalom.